uh, Don Bouchard. And uh, uh, Don Bouchard is a pediatrician, and uh, he also has an MBA, and he's a member of the Catholic Medical Association. And he really has, a, you know, a, a unique project in his hometown that I think will be very valuable for all of us to listen to. Uh, Don, our, uh, uh, welcome, uh, Don Bouchard. I promise I scaled it back a lot. Uh, I first want to start by saying that every system could be like Gene Diamond and every diocese could be like Bishop Bacchus. The world would be totally different. <laughs>
a context that kind of helps to reclaim the professionalism. It helps to, to, to re-identify them with their personal vocational mission. Very, very important. The, uh, my, my conversation with them usually surrounds uh, this, this one quote from the other one, the religious directives. Uh, the contemporary understanding of the Catholic health care ministry must take into account the new challenges presented by transitions both in the church and the American and American society. And in looking at uh, the state of Catholic health care at this point, I think this, is, uh, this statement could have been written for today. I mean, it really could have just been uh, written for the situation we find ourselves in. Now, uh, in order to, to really get an understanding of where you're going, it's real important to know where you've been. And the more I've studied the, the history of Catholic health care, the, the more you realize how profoundly simple and overwhelmingly devout the, his, the history is. I mean, the, this is care at the bedside. This is the covenant relationship. The, minister, the, the missionary spirit, the religious, the religious sisters, and the <coughs> Um, and this is you know, very, very important to keep that frame of mind or that understanding as we're going through uh, other transitions or the transitions that, uh, that uh, the church and society have undergone. Well, that should have been a picture of the original copy of the ethnic religious directives that were uh, printed in the Linux report, which is uh, the uh, periodical from the Catholic Medical Association back in 1948. Um, let's see. Yeah, again, as, as the basic scientific basis for medicine became known, the decision stopped being made at the bedside. And that's kind of the problem that we find ourselves in today, is that for a system that is Catholic in name only, they can rest on the laurels that Ascension, for instance, uh, you know, the, the, the Catholic decisions are being made there, and they're not really claiming the identity or living up to the identity at the best time. <coughs> this is interesting. The, uh, it says, yeah, I don't want to quote this. The, the directors were designed for use by trustees and administrators to, uh, quote, explain and promote the observance of the moral law of God in our Catholic institutions. That was in the, the original, the original uh, printing. All right, so now let's get back to looking at where we are. And again, I've uh, scaled this down, and I apologize, but uh, looking at the transitions in American society since that time, Roe versus Wade, and then the physicians. What when we go over this? I mean, th this is all. This all makes sense. That as, as we continue to uh, to go on, it just kind of makes the picture for them. It's euthanasia assisted suicide, Dr. Kavorkins. We actually had Dr. Kavorkins, the attorney, come to our hospital in Grand Rapids and called us a bunch of names as he took one of our patients to uh, the east side of the state to, uh, to, to kill him. And then destruction of the family um, from this unbridled individualism. And of course, within the church, the Second Vatican Council, the Humanae Vitae, the culture of life. Current challenges brought up by these transitions, we're all, we're all very familiar with the Phoenix abortion case, Catholic Health West forfeiting its uh, Catholic identity, the Affordable Care Act, the HHS mandate, and the conflicting messages from the USCCB and the Catholic Health Association. I was at uh, Ascension's uh, national meeting last year uh, when they brought up Sister Kim and introduced her as the voice for Catholic health care in America, which it, it, it was really kind of scary and really very sad um, because that's what the that, that's what the hospitals that's what they believe she is a. All this serves to confuse the public, deceive the faithful, even the schism in the church, and they really leave Catholic health care away from the, the richness uh, that, that, that it really could have. But on the same token, especially in our area, it's also uh, we're serving to awaken the sleeping lion, which is Catholic, uh, Catholic physicians. There's been a lot more interest, a lot more questions, uh, really starting at the diocese level. Um, and, uh, really trying to bring people together. Uh, clarify the, again, professional vocational mission of the, of the Catholic physician. That's where physician formation comes in. And again, uh, I will 
hopefully talk more about the physician formation program later, uh, and then strengthen the resolve and the unity of, of Catholic physicians. And that's part of the reason why we're looking at uh, forming the Catholic clinic. People are looking at it, looking for an alternative. Okay, the current paradigm. Uh, and, and talking with administrators, <coughs> uh, not just in Kalamazoo, but uh, at, at Ascension in St. Louis. Um, they, they, they all agree that the current paradigm is too centralized, too alienated from the faithful, too much brick and mortar, uh, too dependent on admissions, and I'm sure that you're saying this at your hospitals as well. You have even fewer admissions, but the admissions, the, the patients are older, they're sicker, more multi-system disease, they're staying longer. And uh, the system is really ill-prepared for the rapidly approaching transition to the outpatient. Uh, the, the, they, they're just too dependent on the, the hospitalized, the, the, the old paradigm, if you will, of Catholic healthcare. The, the new paradigm that we're, that we're trying to set up in Kalamazoo, again, is more because we don't have uh, a, a real receptive uh, Catholic healthcare system or Catholic hospital there, uh, the coming together of physicians, again, seeking more of a better formative uh, experience in their faith, partnering with a local bishop. Uh, on April 22nd, we had a meeting with 11 physicians, two uh, priests, an attorney, and a dentist on how to move this clinic forward. Um, before every meeting is an hour of adoration, and then uh, a meeting for as long as we need to. Uh, and then again, investigating and embracing healthcare alternatives that promote a culture of life. What we're looking at at this point, since it's going to be totally outpatient, is um, the, the, the attorney, well, the group has just been given the direction to look at what we can get illegally and doctrinally, and really, we don't want to do anything illegal, but we want to evaluate and, and define these uh, directives that we've been given legally. Uh, in a moral way. So if, you know, for instance, one of the things we're looking at a perinatal hospice, but also looking at developing uh, Orthodox Catholic school-based health centers within the Catholic uh, school system, within the Diocese of Kalamazoo. Um, you know, just looking at uh, other ways of, of helping to, I guess, grow the business, get, get people out there, get people knowing what we're, what we're working on. Now, it's when we're working with the physicians and looking at the output of the directives to this point, if they do work in a Catholic uh, hospital, chances are they have been told that the ethical and religious directives are something to be worked around, not something to be dealt with. Um, and if it's part of bringing them through the, the various documents and the, and the programs that we bring them through, it really is to bring Catholic health care back to the bedside back to the covenant relationship between the physician and their patient. And with the, the ethical religious directives uh, really being the moral guide for the providers, it's the starting point, and not the ending point for difficult discussions, but it's the basis of the covenant between the physician and the patient. Um, and much like those of us that, that took the, the Hippocratic oath to find graduating from medical school, that means something. It, it is, it's, it's an oath, it's a covenant, it's much more than a contract or a you know, commitment. It really, it, it, it has a depth of meaning. And this is a wonderful foundation for the physician to, uh, again, embrace the ethical and religious directives as an oath to, to their practice. Again, all of this brings the Catholic Healthcare back to a covenant relationship, uh, places responsibility of Catholic healthcare locally and forms a partnership locally to address the technological, scientific, and spiritual needs of the community. Plan plot. All that's necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. <laughs>